Hi everyone, I'm Nora Tobin here with my great friend Seth Streeter, CEO and founder of Mission Wealth. And Seth has done so much in his career for himself and so many others, and I'm very excited to share or have him share with us not only his background and what he's found to be purposeful in his life and, and in all the lives he's affected, but also to share with us how we might be able to elevate our lives, whether it's for sleep, stress, energy, or overall productivity from his 11 dimensions of wellness. So Seth, thank you for joining me and I'm excited. We've been friends for a long time, but I'm excited to, sh to share what you've shared with me. So. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Nora. It's great to join you and your community. So tell me just a little bit about how you started with Mission Wealth and where you've taken it and then now with this big transition that you've had, where that's gone. Sure. Well, I founded my company 20 years ago, uh, Mission Wealth, and we're a national wealth management company. And like many executives, you know, my mindset was all on achieving goals and getting ahead. And uh, I was kind of willing to sacrifice things to get there, not from an ethics standpoint, but from a health standpoint. You know, I would work late, I would skip lunches, uh, didn't sleep a whole lot, took on a lot of stress. And why did I do that? Because I wanted to be wealthy. I wanted to be successful and have my company succeed and, and affect a lot of lives. Uh, but along that journey, like many of us, you know, when we're sitting in cars and planes and commuting, uh, we're kind of pushing the pedal to the metal. Sometimes we start to feel like we're uh, kind of like missing out on, on key aspects of living. You know, I missed some of my daughter's volleyball games and I, you know, had some health challenges and I just wasn't feeling kind of balanced. And yet I was thriving and succeeding in this traditional sense. And so that was really my wake-up call, was saying, Seth, you're getting ahead in one standpoint, but yet I didn't really feel fulfilled in other ways. And did you, like, what was the transition there once you decided, or once you recognized it? Because I think the biggest part of change is just simply recognizing it. Right. And then being able to take that next step is, is can be very hard. And so yeah. how did you, you, it doesn't seem like you slowed down, so how <laughs> did you, for yourself first, transition from that? busy state where there was just, you know, going, going, going to what you are, you're quite balanced now. Yeah. You know, I, I look back on it as a blessing in disguise, but I had some wake up calls. You know, I went through a tough divorce. I had some health challenges. We had the financial crisis of 2008 mm -hmm. and I had a lot of major stress events that kind of hit me and, and forced me to reevaluate, like, what is this path that I'm on and is it truly serving, you know, my highest self? And so from those events, I kind of just took it as a wake up call. And I started to dive into like, what is wealth? What is balance? You know, what is fulfillment? And it was interesting because, you know, we've worked with a lot of very affluent families. And while they may have $10 million homes and these great lifestyles, a lot of them weren't necessarily that happy. And I've done a lot of service work around the world and worked with, you know, orphans in Honduras and Guatemala. And they seemingly have very little, but many of these families were completely content and fulfilled. And so I thought, gosh, getting ahead and having an abundant life isn't just about money. And so I kind of just woke up and said, what can I do to A, lead by example and start to live my life in new ways and B, help others kind of wake up to the same calling to live a more fulfilled and balanced life. And that's when you came up with the 11 dimensions. Right, right. Which I've started to practice from, Good. from your teachings. And it's just really interesting to me to see that these dimensions, which you'll explain to everyone, but these dimensions really give you these actionable tools that really meet you where you are. And it's not having to take this huge overhaul or go across the world and no. live in a, you know, ashram and create quote unquote balance. I mean, balance is in the moment, right where you are, whether it's yes. in the boardroom or in a Zoom meeting or whatever it might be, or picking up your daughter from volleyball. I mean, yeah. it's, it's finding it there. So are you able to share with us a couple of the dimensions or all of the dimensions, whatever you want for today, but I sure. would love to hear some of that. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I think it starts with kind of redefining what our definition of success is. You know, I was working with someone who was uh, worth about $150 million a couple of years ago. And by a traditional sense, he was extremely successful. He made a lot of money. His business was thriving. But, you know, he couldn't climb a couple flights of steps without getting super winded. He needed uh, sleeping pills to go to sleep at night because he was so stressed. He uh, had kind of grown estranged from his family because he was working all the time. Mm 
And here's a guy who's worth, you know, a couple hundred million dollars, but was he wealthy? No. So, you know, what I started to do is I started to think about what are these other dimensions of wealth that really matter? Like the one that's going to resonate greatly with you is your physical wealth, right? How your body looks, feels, and functions is a critical dimension of wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we think about our social capital. So the, the dynamic and the caliber of relationships we have with our friends and in the community or with our family members. Uh, our emotional well-being is a dimension of wealth. Do we wake up happy? And generally, do we have a positive attitude? Or, you know, are we needing to like pep ourselves up just to get through each day? So the emotional dimension of wealth is critical. Uh, having a career that feels aligned and where we are feeling appreciated for our gifts and our contributions mm -hmm. is another dimension of wealth. A lot of people are doing jobs just because they're a job instead of finding their natural gifts and living more inspired by making a difference in the work that they do and feeling really appreciated for that. Mm -hmm. uh, are we growing intellectually, like our intellectual dimension? And do we feel like we're kind of, you know, firing new synapses and getting new stimulus intellectually? And are we uh, making an impact? Like, do we feel like we're contributing to society in some positive way? Uh, so those are just a few of the dimensions. Uh, you know, there's a couple others. A spiritual dimension is like, do you feel connection to a framework beyond yourself? Mm -hmm. And fun is a dimension. Are we actually having fun? Like, when was the <laughs> last time you had a deep belly laugh, you know? So whether it's social, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, career, impact, these are all some of the other dimensions of wealth that is really critical for us to assess ourselves in beyond just the financial dimension. So if, if I were to look at all 11 and say, gosh, that, that all sounds amazing. I want to do it all, but I need somewhere to start. And I, yeah. I'm feeling slightly overwhelmed with working from home and maybe some have kids and, you know, there's so many aspects to, to where we're coming from, to our foundation and our, our routines and also our patterning. What would you recommend for just this the best place to start or, yeah. and I'm sure it's different for everybody. I'm sure it's personal, but is there a, is there something that you recommend to your clients and in, in your incredible events that you lead? Where do you typically start? Right. Well, I think it starts by giving yourself permission to hit the pause button. Like take That's some a good time. One. Oh, I'm like, giving the chill. Go in nature. Yeah. Have a journal. Do some reflection time instead of just going, going, going from mm -hmm. the commute to the Zoom meeting to the other meeting to your kids' events. Like. Give yourself some space. Like spaciousness is really critical when it comes to having reflection time. And think about these 11 dimensions and we'll share a link on how people can get access to the 11 dimensions. Mm -hmm. And I would just ask yourself like a couple questions. Like A, where do you feel you currently have the greatest abundance? Like where can you pat yourself on the back and say, you know what, I'm pretty good in these areas. Mm -hmm. And it's totally subjective, right? It's like, right. I feel good for me in these areas. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, you know, where are a couple dimensions on this wheel that I would like to lean into, that I'd like to put more attention to or resource into. And just by identifying those couple areas that you wanna lean into, well then you can start the journey. And I would say kind of start where your wheel is a little bit bumpy. And we have some great exercises and resources and podcasts and TED Talks and things to give to people so that they can tap into some great teachers, some master teachers mm -hmm. on these subjects. I think of you as one of them. Uh, so being able to start to just get some ideas of how you can have greater abundance in some of these dimensions that you've possibly been neglecting, mm -hmm. and then stop deferring your dreams. Like start right. giving yourself time and energy to dedicate to these parts of your lives that you know can be more fulfilled, mm -hmm. which would help you be a better parent, a better partner, a better business leader. Mm -hmm. It would help you live a more robust life. And that type of, I think, approach to the framework you've put in place, but also just that attitude that the time is now. Yes. And there's no reason to feel like you have to do it all at once, but it's this ongoing transformation that we're all in. It's never just, we're never hitting a point and then that's it. Right. We've, we've, we've not reached the goal of abundance and then we're done. It's like, it's every day we're practicing these things to make us feel good, make us feel energized, connect with others, mm -hmm. connect with ourselves. So it does seem like, all these 11 dimensions give you the tools to actually do so and continually do so. But with the, with the knowing patience that it doesn't have to happen overnight. Right. It doesn't have to happen overnight. And we have to celebrate our little micro wins. Yeah. And, you know, we do, in a, we do these events, we call them uh, developing your life 3.0 vision uh, because uh, I have this framework that life is in three phases. And so 1.0 is when we're younger and we get our sense of identity. You know, are we an athlete? Are we an introvert? Are we an academic? Are we the funny girl? Like, who are we? And then we pick our field of study, we start our careers, and now you're in 2.0. 
which is a phase of responsibility, right? You may be having a family, you're starting a business, you're getting your grad degrees, you, you have a mortgage, you're like adulting, right? So mm -hmm. you're in this responsibility phase. And then there comes a time when if you have children, they become more independent. Maybe you've made a decent amount of money, you've achieved a lot of your professional goals, and you start to think about 3.0, which is a phase of freedom. And in 3.0, it's things like, gosh, what's my legacy gonna be? Mm -hmm. I'd like to make more impact. I'd, I'd love to learn how to play guitar. I would love to go to Bali. I'd love to, you know, spend more time with my loved ones. I'd like to get healthy again. So these are aspects of 3.0, but what happens to a lot of busy professionals and executives is they get stuck at like 2.8 or 2.9. They know 3.0 is ahead, but so much of their sense of identity is caught up in what they've done and their past mm -hmm. accomplishments and their businesses and their academic pedigree, mm -hmm. being a parent. And so we've developed programs to help people design and ignite a life 3.0 vision that's more meaningful, purposeful, joyful, so that they can take the leap from 2.8 into 3.0. And when you do that, you're going to be paying more attention to these 11 dimensions, mm -hmm. and you're going to be kinder to yourself, and you're going to be giving yourself some self-care to invest in some of these dimensions that you've been ignoring for so long. And in so many ways, it's this whole new chapter after you've completed something that was such a monumental effort to get there. Right. There's so much more after that. Life is not done. You Life know, is not done. There's so, a lot there's to a, live. So much to live for. Yeah. And, you know, I like this chart. If you picture nine, 10 rows of 10 diamonds on each. So let's just say we live to age 100. Okay, mm -hmm. that'd be great if we could all live to 100. And you cross out the rows that you've already lived. Okay, so I just turned 50. So I cross out five rows of 10. Happy birthday. Thank you. And so hopefully I have another four to five rows left of living. Yeah. But I know that that last decade, I might not have my mobility and energy. So the last decade is going to be maybe a little bit, uh, you know, not as robust. So I have like four rows, three rows, whatever rows you have left. But look at those rows and look at those rows with like a, an intentionality to say, gosh, I'm not going to waste these precious diamonds of my life. Each year is a precious diamond yeah. to be our best self and to be kind to ourselves and to do work that feels aligned and mm -hmm. to spend time with people you care about who inspire you. So for me, it's like carpe diem, you know, it's yes. time for us to be our best self. And I just really appreciate the work you're doing to kind of nudge people in that direction. Yes. Thank you, Seth. And it's that's such a great lead in to, to, being able to just ask you really short questions or sh questions with short answers sure. to just tell me to give everybody these simple tools, but just the message that you're sharing is so important. And I think if anything, if there's only one takeaway, it is that idea that we can drop right into the moment and live our best life right here, right now. We don't have to wait. Yes. And that's a really important message. I think for everyone, no matter where you're living, what you're doing, what you're doing professionally or personally, it's, the time is now. There's always going to be another deadline. There's always going to be more emails. Yeah. And we can't keep deferring our dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Life is now. Live your dreams now. Give yourself permission to say yes. 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 Love yes. it. <laughs> okay, tell me a quick morning routine yeah. for you or for what yeah. you would recommend. So I have a new hack. I've tried to start the whole like long-term meditation thing in the morning. It hasn't worked for me. So my hack to have a great day is when I first wake up, I actually keep my eyes closed and I kind of breathe in gratitude for the day. I just mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm awake, but I'm not like fully in the day. Mm -hmm. And I just think of a few things that I'm really grateful for. You know, I just like breathe in some gratitude. And then I get up and I walk outside and I, oh, I have a nice view from my home and I kind of stretch in the morning. And I just kind of breathe in the fresh air. I stretch in the morning in the view and I do two things. And then I, you know, hop in the shower, have my green tea, start my day. But by giving myself that little micro moment of gratitude and then that kind of expression of yes into my day, mm -hmm. it's just giving me kind of an anchor uh, that really serves me through the day. And then at the end of the day, I go back before I go to bed, right as I'm closing my eyes, and I kind of rewind through the day and I say, gosh, how did I contribute today? Where did I grow or learn today? And if I can kind of have those two bookends to my day, I find everything in between tends to be a little bit sweeter. Which makes so much sense, not only to have a better day, but also from a neural patterning connection. I mean, mm. you're creating these new neural patterns in your brain and then solidifying those by actually taking that extra moment to experience it, yeah. which has been shown to actually then create these new connections and get rid of the ruts that we sometimes create in our yes. brain. Tell me what brings you joy. Oh my gosh. Well, chocolate chip cookies always come to the top <laughs> of my list. One. I flip and love chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I love being in the ocean. Uh, last night, my son and I went and we dove in and we swam in the ocean. Uh, I love playing being a kid. Yeah. I love being in nature. 
Uh, and I love actually connecting with people and helping them kind of be inspired to be them best selves. Like that's like work that comes from my heart and I just really love it. And what would you recommend or, or what would you say for yourself when you're having a bad day? Mm. Or a stressful day? I would give myself permission to have a really bad five minutes. Yeah. Now I'm going to be my water heater blew up today and it was water <laughs> all over my garage. And I gave myself five, maybe even 10 minutes to be a little pissed off that water yeah. was all over. And my son hadn't picked up stuff that he was supposed to pick up. So the water kind of ruined some things in our garage. Uh, so I, I would say give yourself like a boundary from mm -hmm. which to have that bad moment, but then it's done and yeah. then choose to have, you know, a great minute six and beyond. It doesn't have to carry you forward. We have yeah. the ability to turn it off and turn it on. Mm -hmm. Such a good point. Okay. Last one. What is your definition of a meaningful life? Mm. I love this, uh, quote by Pablo Picasso, which is, uh, we get meaning in life by finding our gift and we get purpose in life by giving it away. Mm. And so for me, meaning is about helping others shine where they naturally shine. So if I can find out what someone's unique gift is, and it might be a stranger on an airplane, I kind of play this game like what's her unique gift? And if I can identify that and help amplify it a bit, then that to me gives me tons of meaning. So I love finding people's oh, gifts and turning up the volume with their gifts so they can shine more brighter into the world. Because like what I always say and I share with my kids is, our most important thing in life is to be in the fullest expression of ourselves. So if the fullest expression of me is helping other people be in the fullest expression of themselves. Oh, such wisdom. Mm, and so, you. so important, especially now. I mean, it's always important, but this type of knowledge and just reminders of what we have within, is just a really important and timely message. So yeah. thank you so much. So oh, thank you pleasure. for sharing. Thank you, you're Mara. quite the soul. And I'm so glad that you're, mm helping so many. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you.